Why is the watch collecting world going so nuts for this watch? Why though? <laughs> this is the Omega Swatch collaboration, the Moon Swatch. It was released on March 23rd, 2022, and it has done something really strange to the watch collecting community. It's divided it. Now, the watch collecting community being divided isn't the strange thing. Just say the word Rolex and witness the immense love or anger arise. But it is the fact that a plastic toy swatch has sparked this big of a reaction and how quickly we've watched the tides shift from fanfare to vexation. That is really peculiar. So why are people losing their minds over a toy swatch? And why do I think the moon swatch is pure and utter crap? Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. All engines running. Which, which one are you getting? Which watch? I wasn't going to make this video because I thought it was a bit played out by this point. It feels like everyone and their dog has made a moon swatch video. But then I bought this copy of the New York Times and hidden within it is an insert that says watches. And the cover story of this insert is the moon swatch. In August, the headline story is still the moon swatch. Not the Tudor Ranger, not the economic crash affecting secondary watch value, still, it's the Moon Swatch. <laughs> Which I found weird because this watch sucks. <laughs> Why are you always gotta be so mean to me? Like objectively, as a watch, it's a steaming hot piece of garbage. When you pick it up, you can feel the lack of build quality, how light it is. It's made out of plastic. I mean, bio-ceramic. It feels almost fragile in your hands. In fact, Bark and Jack just did a video last week about how one of the chronograph pushers just fell off. It fell off. It wasn't smacked against a door. It didn't, I didn't hit it against a desk. That is not okay. The strap is awkward. The watch itself scratches easily. The paint chips and the dyes have been known to fade onto your skin. And here's the best one. Here's my favorite one. The glass crystal isn't even crystal. It's plastic, which scratches incredibly easily, and there's no way to have it replaced. The offer is someone in the swatch store might try to buff it out for you. <laughs> and all of this, all of this quality is delivered to you for about $250 or about 200 pounds. Oh, this is not a $250 watch. That is honestly way too much for this watch. <laughs> In fact, calling it a watch might be too generous. It's more of a toy than a timepiece. But even with all this, for some weird reason, I kind of love them. I know exactly what they are. I just like them. So I've had these three moon swatches from my really amazing and generous friends, Tim and Finn, and the entire time they've been in, I just haven't been able to stop wearing them. Maybe because it's the summer, maybe it's because they're just fun. I don't know. They just make me happy and I want to wear them. I liken them a bit to how much I like Kraft Dinner or to our American viewers at Kraft Mac and Cheese. <laughs> I know it's disgusting and I hate myself every time I eat it. It's sad pasta with powdered cheese. I don't think it should be approved for human consumption. But also, I just love it, okay? And British people don't eat this fine cuisine, so I have to get mine imported at a huge premium. <laughs> Am I getting ripped off? Yes. Will I pay it? Also yes. Is it crap? Yes, but it's my crap. I like this crap. And that is exactly how I feel about the Moon Swatch. From reading your comments and researching this video, it seems like there are three big reasons why people are so angry about the Moon Swatch. Price, quality, and availability. And I think the first two reasons are kind of linked. It's the quality you're getting for that price. It's a very low quality watch. And at this price point, 
it doesn't match what you're getting. At the 200 pound price point, you could be getting a really great watch, like a new Seiko SRPG 27K1 or a Bulova Marine Star. Or if you really wanted to splurge for a hundred pound more, you could get the Hamilton Khaki Field Mechanical or a Tissot PRX. Really great watches and not just kind of plastic toys. But I think the quality and the price was something people could generally forgive. It's just a fun novelty swatch. But the cherry on top, the thing that pushed people over to being just plain vexed is the lack of availability and the flipper culture the moon swatch hype created. So back when this watch was first released at the end of March 2022, it was met with immense fanfare. These really cool, colorful Omega swatches, these different colors representing different celestial bodies. There's the sun, Venus, Earth, Mars, the moon, and they're represented through this really well-loved watch in the watch collecting community, the Omega Speedmaster. They actually trialed a few other watches as well. So other top contenders included the Blanc Pond, 50 Fathoms, and the Omega Seamaster but they ended up choosing the beloved Speedy. As pictures started leaking and the release date began creeping up, things started to go nuts. Everybody went nuts. There was crowds. There was possibly a shooting or a stabbing. There was a stabbing. There, there was a stabbing, stabbing. confirmed. Uh, Sir, what time did you go? Six o'clock last night. I'm not complaining about the watch. I'm complaining about the morons. Excuse me, if you've done this, you are a moron who spent hours in line waiting for it to be released. People lined up in droves outside of Swatch boutiques and even camped out for these. Fights broke out, Swatch shops had to shut down, and in some cases, the police even had to get involved. It was absolute carnage to the point where Swatch had to remind customers, this wasn't a limited edition and it's not gonna be limited to only boutiques. This is gonna be available online really soon. So there's no need to go crazy. Stop panicking, guys. They're going to come online. Until they just didn't. <laughs> Weeks go by and nothing. Months go by and still nothing online. In an interview with Fratello, Swatch CEO Nick Hayek commented, There is no emotion in buying online. It's a carefully produced Swiss-made watch and not a commodity. <laughs> carefully produced. <laughs> After the whole world had to stay at home for two years because of COVID, it was about time to celebrate and bring people back on the streets, meet together and revive the brick and mortar stores. Yeah, that's why they're doing it, guys. That's why you're doing it. It's, it's to help us celebrate the end of the pandemic. At the end of the day, they're a business. Of course, they want hype and excitement and the illusion of exclusivity. But for what? For this? <laughs> This isn't exactly the pinnacle of luxury. It's a plastic watch, but this hype and excitement is exactly what Swatch needed. Swatch, although historic and important to the Swiss watch industry, has been bleeding money. Morgan Stanley estimates Swatch was in need of a serious boost to its sales, which went down tens of millions per year. Swatch was in trouble, and this was the exact boost that they needed to not go under and remain relevant. So it makes sense as to why they are gonna milk this. They are gonna milk this teat as far as this teat can be milked. <laughs> they are gonna do anything they can do to keep us talking about this watch because they need it and it's working. I'm making this video talking about them right now. They are still the front page of watches inserts in the New York Times. Morgan Stanley is projecting Swatch to hit $150 million by the end of this year, which is quite the improvement from the $3.2 million made last year, largely thanks to the Moon Swatch. That is massive. This moment that we're living in is kind of a historic moment for Swatch, and it's important that we talk about it and look at it as a bigger movement than just, it's just a plastic hunk of shit, just go watch Adrian's video about the chronograph pusher falling off. This is a big moment. This is bigger than the watch enthusiast community, which I think we can very easily forget. I think my final conclusions, which I'm about to share, will be kind of unpopular, but if you've made it to this point of the video anyways, hear me out. 
My final conclusion is that I think we've kind of been unfair to Swatch in this whole Moon Swatch release. I know. I'm sorry. I'm so I know I'm going to hear about this in the comments. But I think maybe we've forgotten about what the essence of Swatch is. Swatch isn't trying to make watches like Seiko or Hamilton, but rather they make fun, zany, kind of disposable watches. Their name Swatch means second watch. They aren't trying to be your primary daily grinder, go anywhere, do anything, bash this thing around, alpha male kind of watch. They're fun, zany, cheap, almost tacky, tacky in a charming way. They're disposable. But with that said, I don't think all standards should be thrown out the window. Adrian's chronograph button coming off after minimal wear, totally unacceptable. But on the flip side, you can't and you shouldn't be surprised when your swatch gets some scratches on the plastic crystal. It's totally overpriced for what it is. But it's just that fun novelty kind of thing that you'll spend your money on because it's just fun. <laughs> and that's the essence of swatch. And it's okay if you say in the comments, I would never spend my money on one of these. That's okay. No one's making you buy one. I'm not going to try to convince you to buy one. I'm going to tell you why I like it. And quite frankly, they have more than enough people who want one without you. So. <laughs> I think with the first two problems people have with this watch, so the price and quality, we're kind of asking too much from Swatch. But I definitely agree on the availability, and I think this is what ultimately killed this watch in the enthusiast circles. These little rinky-dink shits shouldn't be the image of exclusivity and you can't get one of these. Enthusiasts are already exhausted from that narrative, and it's a narrative that we know all too well. I thought, and I, I guess my dream and my hope for these were that they were going to be let's have fun and party kind of watches let's celebrate let's do these crazy colorful speedmasters and to me it's the availability that has been just such a missed opportunity potential wasted on this watch that could have just been so fun and enjoyable and everyone could have enjoyed it but remember in the watch buying world we the enthusiasts we're the minority we are the exception we are not the average customer this is a massive watch for Swatch, and I'm actually really happy for them. I don't want to live in a world where Swatch doesn't exist. And this watch could have saved the company. It really and truly is a brilliant watch. Cheap, tacky, utter garbage, but brilliant. Anyways, these are just some of my thoughts. As always, I'd love to hear some of yours in those comments down below. Like, comment, subscribe, all that YouTube stuff. And until next time.